I'm just going to show you how you put your fabric in your hoop if this is the first time you've done an embroidery. So we sit the fabric on top of the smaller ring and then you put your larger ring over the top just trying to get that design in the centre but you can always move it at the end once you've stitched it so don't worry if you can't get it in the centre sometimes a bit annoying oh that's terrible um, so when you're happy tighten up your hoop and you want it to be like a as tight as a drum so that's a bit loose so I'm going to keep pulling the edges around getting it nice and fabric nice and flat and then keep tightening the screw until we've got it nice and tight in the hoop so this is the project that we are going to stitch this month this is one of Annie's designs translated into an embroidery design so we are stitching with two strands of thread so oh excuse my dirty hands um so you split your thread down to i can't get that to focus but we've got two strands of thread here and um, and this so we're using two strands to get a really lovely um detail because this is quite detailed um design and we're going to use back stitch just a simple back stitch because that gives you the kind of like thinnest line possible to stitch in these um little details so we're going to go all just follow the printed design and fill in those lines keep your stitches as small as you can and just gradually fill in all of the the flowers and then the the lettering is done in the same way so we're using little back stitches and i'll demonstrate a little back stitch in a minute and then we just have three french knots so if you hate them there's only three just to dot your eyes um here and then we are using a kind of a satin stitch more of a satin stitch to do these kind of middle bits of the flower so you can make them you can kind of pile on the thread as much or as little as you want to kind of make them um stand out a little bit from the rest of the stitching um and you know satin stitch just looks so lovely when you kind of build it up and build it up and it gives it that really satiny kind of like lovely quilted kind of textured Feel. So I will go through each of those stitches and show you close up how we're going to do them. So I've got my design ready to start stitching but I'm just going to show you again how we split the thread. So you can see each bigger strand of embroidery thread is made up of six smaller strands and we want two for this. So we're going to pull two away and just really gently separate the threads there are lots of different ways of doing this it tends to get a bit there we go you can pull one strand um, hold on to one strand and then pull the other five down and do it a strand by strand there are a few different ways of um, splitting thread but that's a basic way of doing it so now we're going to start looking at some of our stitches so I've got my two strands of thread and I've tied a knot in the end so and that's what my thread looks like so you have got all your instructions here in this lovely book and um, all the stitches are here for you but it often helps to see somebody do it in real life so let's go so I'm gonna start with just some back stitch now, forgive me, because I'm doing this with a phone in front of me. It's not always the easiest thing to do. I need to sort my video setup out. Anyway, this is the back stitch. So we do one stitch. One little stitch. And then you come up the same distance again that you want your stitches to be. And we go down the whole 
the last hole that we went down with that last stitch so you're just always going back into the hole that you've already made with your previous stitch and with this design the smaller you can get your stitches the better because the the more detail you'll be able to show of the design So mine are really, they're very wobbly, those stitches, but that's okay. I sometimes find it takes you a while to get into it and your stitches just become neater as you go along. So that's back stitch and I'll do a little close up as well. I'm going over, I'm crossing my T, so I'm just going over the stitches that I've already stitched. And then start my little back stitches again. So right on cue, there's some drilling, but that doesn't stop you seeing what I'm doing here. So just follow the line with your stitch. show you a French knot. Lots of people hate these but we've only got three and once you've mastered them you'll be away. So we're coming up through our fabric and by the way this is much easier to do when you've got an embroidery stand and we have started selling these in the shop now. And then you're you're pulling your thread tight with your left hand if you're right-handed and then we're placing our needle on the thread so you want to go round twice and then go back down, pulling the thread tight and you've made your little knot. So it is all about getting your thread around the needle in the right direction and that will basically mean whether you make a knot or whether it just pulls through the fabric straight away. So that's our one knot done. So I'm going to do it again. So I'm pulling it tight with my left hand and sitting the needle on the thread. I'm going to go round twice, then back down pretty much where we came up. Still pulling the thread tight. And then I've made my other little knot. So we've gone over twice with that French knot, but if you want a bigger French knot, go over three or four times. If you want a smaller French knot, just go over once. And now we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do the satin stitch. So really, it's not that different to back stitch, but you're just going kind of, um, stitches are going kind of side by side. You're not, it is a little bit different to back stitch because you're not going back up the, um, back down the stitch, your previous stitch. But you're just really building little stitches next to each other. I'm gonna cover that print so you can't see the print. But just go along the middle of the flower and just gradually build it up. So I'm just gonna not even attempt to get them next to each other to start with. I'm just going to keep going along and then I'll come back and just gradually fill in the shape with my stitches. And it's nice on this pattern because it gives you a lovely 
a little, a different feel and um, a different texture to break up the back stitch that you're using on the lines. I've just lost my thread. You keep going like that until you're happy. But you've got the look that you want and it's really quite subjective. So it's what you think looks nice, I think, because this design is quite, um, lots of lines. Um, it's not a kind of a perfect, um, it's, you know, there's lots of lines everywhere. I'm not trying to, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here, but you know, it's quite free. Um, so you kind of decide how neat you want to be, how much stitching you want to do, how precise you want to be. Um, it's really up to you. So I'm just going to keep going and build up a lovely satiny texture for the middle of the flower. Just keep going as much as you want really, but that already is starting to look really lovely. And then you're going to contrast that with the back stitch just all around the um, thin lines. So we are now selling these embroidery stands in the shop and they're really good. They're, um, they stand on the floor like that and then you can change the height. So this moves, so you can change where that sits, but also this moves as well. Um, so great for sitting on a chair or sitting on the sofa. And it just helps you with some of those trickier stitches like the French knot. So if you're really getting into embroidery, then it's a really nice investment to make. And we've got a few in the shop, so I just wanted to show you the stand. Once you've finished your stitching, which I haven't on this, don't, don't look at that. You need to trim around the edge of your hoop. So we're looking for about two centimeters, two, three centimeters. Trim around the edge. Ignore the fact that I've sewn my back edge onto the thing by accident. You're trimming your edge and then you get your wadding. And the easiest way is to trim it to the size of your backing disc. Because that will make it the right size for your hoop. You put that in the back of your hoop and you fold your fabric in and then you press your disc in and it should just do it like that. You want to push the sides a little but then you're all ready. You've got a lovely quilted beautiful plump hoop ready to hang on the wall so that is how you finish it off and then i just wanted to show you as well i mean I, you've seen it because you're watching this you've got the box but the extra gift in this month's hoop club box is amazing so this beautiful pouch which is for you to put your sewing bits and bobs in so these are hand screen printed for us by my friend April. So each one is unique and they're made in the UK and they're such a lovely quality. So we'll be selling these on the shop and we'll be selling Cotton Clara ones as well. But, oh my goodness, love them so much. 